Welcome back to the Sentinel Report. I'm your host, Alex Newman. Folks, uh, we have a very special guest joining us today. His name is Thomas Hampson. He's the founder of the Truth Alliance Foundation. And uh, like I said earlier, he's been an investigator for over 50 years. He started off as an intelligence analyst at the U.S. Air Force. During the Vietnam War, he became an investigator and later the chief investigator for the Legislative Investigating Commission, known as the uh, Illinois Crime Investigating Commission. Uh, the primary focus of that uh, agency was organized crime and official misconduct, but he organized uh, extensive undercover operations on drugs, other organized uh, crime and related investigations. He also spent two years undercover in the KKK, uh, just a, a fascinating law enforcement background. Um, he has done some really good pieces for the Illinois Family Institute. I write regularly for the Illinois Family Institute. I think the world of what they are doing there. And um, uh, Thomas had some great pieces there. Now, during his tenure uh, with the state, one of the many operations he directed was an eight-year investigation into the sexual exploitation of children, uh, including commercial sex trafficking and uh, child pornography. It remains the most extensive law enforcement investigation on this topic ever done in the United States. And so after he left uh, employment in the state of Illinois. He founded this international investigation agency that specialized in conducting complex civil and criminal investigations. Uh, many of the investigations he conducted actually went after sex predators. In, uh, 2016, or in 2006, he was hired by the Illinois Department of Children and Family Services to conduct a one and a half year investigation into the sexual, sexual exploitation of children by priests in Illinois. And again, in 2009, he founded this great organization, the Truth Alliance Foundation, the nonprofit dedicated to finding better ways and more effective ways of protecting children from child sexual abuse and sexual exploitation. Uh, Thomas, welcome to the program. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, it really, it's, it's an honor to have you. I, I enjoyed thoroughly what you wrote about for uh, the Illinois Family Institute. Now, the, the thing that struck me the most, you, know, you, you say that the vast majority of the, the child sex stuff is not actually they're going out and kidnapping kids off the street, but there, there's different mechanisms whereby they lure these children into this kind of trap. Uh, talk a little bit about how they, they obtain children and procure children for these horrors. Well, most of the, most of the kids who have been, uh, who wind up uh, being involved in sex trafficking, who are trafficked by others, have been sexually abused early in their life. So they've already been desensitized to sexual activity. Um, many of the ones that are most active in the commercial sexual exploitation are, are kids who are runaways. That is the, the children who are, who are most active are runaway children. And uh, they get involved with uh, a, a pimp, somebody that they consider more their boyfriend than somebody that they work for. Um, and the boyfriend puts them to work on the street in order to, in order to earn money. Uh, there are uh, hundreds of thousands of them. Some of the some of them are are actually still living at home, and they're being run by um, by their boyfriend as a as a prostitute on the streets. It's amazing. And I, before we finish today, I do want to ask you about how we we effectively try to stop this and get control of it, because of course it is a big problem. Now, uh, one of the things that you say in your latest article at the Illinois Family Institute is that you're concerned that this is becoming a political issue, right? You you've got uh, kind of people lining up on both sides here, and uh, some people are saying that uh, you know people who are criticizing the Sound of Freedom movement are, maybe are, are minions of this uh, evil cabal trafficking children. And, and so it's kind of being turned into a political football. And, and you, you say that's really inappropriate, that protecting children should not be a political issue. Talk about that. Well, no, it shouldn't be a political issue. Uh, our, the job of everybody is to protect children. So this, the idea is to find the best way to do it. And um, uh, to misrepresent uh, the problem internationally and certainly nationally, the way Sound of Freedom does, directs our attention away from where the real focus should be, which is right where we are. We have everybody, you don't have to send money to somebody to be able to protect children. You can do it yourself right in your own communities because there's plenty of opportunities to do that. Uh, of course, the biggest way to pre protect children is to prevent them from becoming sexually active in the first place, which means we have to do a better job of desexualizing our culture because the um, throughout our culture, children are becoming more, more desensitized to sexual activity. They're being encouraged to engage in sexual activity through um, what they see on TV from the movies, yeah, even in the sex education materials that they're getting in, in schools, 
some of the more uh, extreme sex education that, that's becoming uh, more popular throughout the country now even encourages children to experiment sexually within same sex and opposite sex uh, relationships. So you can see this, this acceptance of younger and younger kids becoming involved actively in sex edu- in, in, in sexual activity. And that's one of the things that the whole community can, can uh, focus on preventing the, the acceptance, this ready acceptance of, of children being engaged in, in uh, things that they're really not prepared to engage in. Um, the other thing is just to be aware of some of the signs of, of who the predators are. You have to know what predators look like, how they operate. Uh, they, they, aren't, uh, they aren't as in the movie Sound of Freedom necessarily uh, these uh, um, uh, mysterious evil people out there somewhere. They're, they're really people that are all around you. Sometimes, in fact, they're, they, they are uh, people that hide in plain sight that people, you have no idea who they might be. They, they're, uh, um, they tend to be, um, they tend to gravitate wherever children are, whether it's in churches and schools in, um, uh, uh, you know, in, in any kind of any in sports activities for kids. Uh, look at uh, Larry Nasser, who was the, who was the gymnastics coach. The, um, you had, um, uh, Jerry Sandusky, who was involved with uh, with uh, the youth, he had that Second Mile organization, and he worked and he worked with youth. They appear to be decent, uh, nice people, and and uh, you have to learn how to recognize what the signs are when somebody might be a potential danger. Yeah, and I definitely want to get into that before we finish here today. How can parents help protect their kids? How do you recognize? Uh, threats and and of course how do you raise up your children with the right values to try to help them not fall into that but I I do have a question for you you know one of the things that kind of came out of the the sound of freedom uh, brouhaha if you will and and you know I guess awareness of this or at least suspicion of this has been growing is that there are people in high places that are involved in this you know we had uh, Senator Nancy Schaefer in Georgia who who alleged that you know even certain government officials in the child protection services were involved in uh, trafficking children through this horrible system. You had, uh, of course, the famous BBC pedophile, uh, uh, Seville, uh, who started like a children's hospital. Uh, so you've got these people in high places in society that normally would escape suspicion. Um, how, how big of a problem is that? Are there people in high places trying to cover this up, trying to deflect attention? Uh, what do you think? Well, there's people in all walks of life that are, that are, that are predators. Yes. I, uh, um, they, uh, it's just like any other criminal. Criminals aren't at a certain level in, in society. They can be at every level of society. And the same, and that operates with, with, uh, these, with, uh, these child predators as well. Um, I don't ha- see any evidence that there is a, for, for my whole career, I haven't seen any evidence that there is a cabal of uh, shadowy figures running around at the, in, in places of power that are covering up um, the massive sexual exploitation of children. It would, be, it would be easier to deal with if that was the case. When, when we first got the investigation back in the 70s to look into the se- commercial sexual exploitation of children, we got it because it, it was believed that... Um, organized crime was involved in it, which is a very large, well-connected um, group of people in the United States that, that had the ability to evade prosecution and had the power to protect their own operations. And, and, and they were able to, to uh, um, uh, bribe law enforcement, bribe judges, keep themselves from being, from being prosecuted. So since our organization specialized in organized crime, they gave it to us. We very quickly found out that wasn't the case that uh, uh, there are networks of predators, but they're networks based on relationships. They're more of a social kind of operation. Uh, Like anybody else, uh, predators tend to be social. They seek out um, 
opportunities to form relationships with like-minded people. The ability of these people to form vast networks today is far greater than it was in the 70s, primarily because of the internet. Uh, they have operations now that have tens of thousands of people that are engaged, in, that are involved in, in uh, online networks of predators that trade pornography back and forth and trade uh, children back and forth. You don't need to have um, uh, people in high places to protect that kind of operation because the sheer size of it alone and the secrecy of operating on the internet is, uh, helps keep them um, hidden. Uh, one of them, uh, if, several years ago, there was an operation called boylover.net that was broken up by international law enforcement that had 70,000 members that were trading uh, um, uh, child pornography back and forth and also children. There, there, was one, there were people that would go around um, all over the world, take their kids with them all over the world and, and sell them to the other people. That's, they, would, they would allow them to be filmed. They would have sex with other kids. They'd have sex with, with the adults. So this network was identified, but to date, out of the 70,000 members, only 184 have been prosecuted because of the difficulty of making cases against those, uh, those, uh, those predators. So the problem is so is huge. And there's thousands of, uh, of, uh, of uh, networks just like boylover.net. So these, the problem is very large and very difficult to make, to make cases. So really, the reason that I got involved uh, and started the Truth Lies Foundation was to find a better way than simply rely only on law enforcement to knock them out. Um, you can't lock, your, lock up your way out of this. You can't arrest enough people. You can't make enough cases against them to have a long enough impact on, on uh, preventing the problem. Plus, we're creating more and more predators all the time with the sexualization of our culture. Uh, we are raising predators. Uh, 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 virtually all of these predators have been victims themselves. Um, we don't even know how many, what percentage of these victims wind up to become predators uh, later on in life. But at the very least, the least uh, that I've seen uh, as an estimate of, of them is 6% and ranging all the way up to 50%. So when you realize that if 6% of, of uh, victims wind up becoming predators themselves and the average predator sexually abuses 150 kids in their lifetime, you're creating, each predator is creating nine more, nine more predators. Uh, that's, that's an incredible amount of, uh, incredibly huge problem. And you're not going to do it by locking everybody up. You got to do it by preventing it. Yeah, it's horrific. Uh, we're almost out of time, but one of the things that I've noticed is the social media companies, the big tech companies. They are masters at silencing people who ask too many questions about the COVID vaccine or, or don't trust the 2020 election. I mean, you post it, it's down, right? You're, you're banned, you're shadow banned, you're blocked, whatever. Uh, and yet there are these networks, as, as you just talked about a moment ago, where people are trading these images back and forth. I mean, Facebook, this has been a huge problem. Uh, a lot of these big tech companies seem to struggle, I guess, with trying to take down these networks of perverts who are trafficking in uh, uh, pornography of children. What do you think is going on with that? Why haven't they been able to, to get a better handle on this? Well, because uh, the, I think our government and governments all over the world are loath to go after the, and, and prosecute under the obscenity statutes. I don't see any reason why the government can't shut down a lot of these pornography sites that, that are easily available to people. Um, why aren't there any more, why aren't there more obscenity prosecutions? Why do four, in 42 states, why are teachers and librarians exempt from prosecution under the obscenity statute? Why is that? Um, it's because there is this big movement in the United States to re remove the, uh, the age of consent and to encourage children to experience sexual pleasure. Uh, um, the, the international sexual rights of the child state that 
every child has a right to experience sexual pleasure whenever and with whomever they want. These, are, these ideas are being promoted by large organizations. Planned Parenthood is one of the leading, the International Planned Parenthood is one of the leading organizations to promote the sexualization of children. Um, and we're tolerating that. And that is that is a huge uh, problem internationally. It's not just in the United States. It's all over the world. Yep. Uh, we're down to just about one minute left. But uh, real quick, uh, I want you to tell the folks how, how they can find your information, your website. But uh, some quick tips for parents and, and adults. How do you protect children from predators who may be in our midst? Well, you have to be engaged with your kids. Uh, you can't you can't just simply trust teachers or or uh, coaches or whatever. You have to be uh, actively engaged uh, with them. Predators won't go after kids whose parents are involved. They go after kids who are more vulnerable, who are isolated, who who don't have who don't have many friends, whose parents are distracted by other uh, by other things. And they're not, they, they don't go to their, their games. They don't go to their activities at school. So if you remain interested and engaged with your child and also monitor what they're doing online, you can, you, your, your child's probably going to be pretty safe. And you well, can find information know. about us on the internet, truth Alliance foundation, all one word.org. Well, I uh, really appreciate you coming on with us. Thank you uh, very much for what you're doing here, Thomas. Uh, hugely significant issue. We appreciate your time. And thank you again for coming on. Thank you. All right, folks. That was Thomas Hampson, founder of the Truth Alliance Foundation, uh, specializing in um, this very issue. Uh, I want to thank you for tuning in. I also want to encourage you folks, uh, go to MyPillow.com, use that promo code Newman. There's some great, great stuff there right now. You know, the 20th anniversary limited edition queen size MyPillow, uh, normally $70 right now. It's $19.98 if you use that promo code Newman. It's, a, a, it's actually what I sleep on every night. They got the king size. Uh, it's on sale right now for $29.98 if you use promo code Newman. You can save 25% off your kitchen towels. Uh, you've got all season slippers, regular price, $149.98 with the promo code. This is a closeout sale, $25. And I'll tell you what, my wife wears these all the time. Just absolutely loves them. Uh, we've got bed sheets on sale for as low as $29.98 if you use that promo code Newman. And uh, I mean, coffee, the My Coffee, which I, I have really enjoyed. It's just a great, great product. You can save up to 50% off and get a free My Pillow, a go anywhere My Pillow if you use that promo code Newman. And that's all at MyPillow.com or MyPillow.com forward slash Newman. You can also go check out MyStore.com for some additional incredible deals. Uh, tomorrow, we have uh, another great episode coming up for you. I hope you will be tuning in. Uh, we'll be back for you with another excellent guest. Uh, i not sure if we've had him before. Bishop E.W. Jackson, just a, a great, great American. And then after that, I'll be flying away to do all kinds of fun stuff. So we'll keep you updated. But thanks again for tuning in to the Sentinel Report. Check us out at libertysentinel.org. Get subscribed to the Substack. If you haven't yet, just put your email in. We'll send you uh, our weekly newsletter for free. You can support us that way if you want to. Also go to franksocial.com. You can follow us there. Thanks again for watching. Alex Newman here for the Sentinel Report. Until next time, God bless you all.